<sighs> G1, once again, we're skipping the post parade. Arthur Cross, right to finish ninth here today with him in Hong Kong. Interesting. Chang, I have not seen that jockey in a while. All right, special art is the favorite, which is a seven horse next to us. Okay, so over odds, right? You got to finish ninth or better. It's Arctic Crop. We really haven't had too many bad performances with him, so I'm not really worried about us finishing worse than ninth. You know, the races in China do seem to be a little bit more challenging for some reason. Not sure why. Anyways, we'll make it happen. We could win. Again, just got to run a... Darn near perfect race. But let's see how we get out of the gate with Arctic. Almost perfect start. I feel like I say that a lot. Seven horse got left in the gate. Favorite is in dead last. Doesn't matter though. He'll probably bounce back more than likely. Arctic Rock, really good start here. We're going to go ahead and just move him to the inside. And hopefully we'll be able to keep the rail. I'm going to keep him right here. Just so a horse doesn't pass us on the inside. That way I still have that leverage if I need it. But this is pretty good. Collins is on the horse to the left of us. He's pulling him back now. We might, we could win this race. We could definitely win this race. We got a seven right now. I'm going to move him slightly behind the 13 horse up here, which is probably Dean. Wonder Whale, she's the third favorite. Oh, yeah. We could potentially win this race. Now I'm going to move Archer Crop to the outside. Okay. Start to make him move up and challenge her a little bit. Give her a little bit of space because she might swing. But now we're going to move Arctic. Two sevens, all right. It's looking good. Now we gotta get them pushing. Long straight. And they're in the home straight. Take off here. We're supposed to finish ninth. Let's see if we can get a revolution. Revolution. Oh yeah. <laughs> revolution with Arctic Crop. Can we pull away and win this G1 in China? I told you I was feeling confident on that backstretch, man. I told you guys I was feeling confident back there. The three is coming, though. Oh, Arctic Crop. Ah, just lost it at the wire. Just lost it. We're supposed to finish ninth, people. We finished second in the money. That's a great effort. I was hoping to win, but golly. Second place expected. Second place finish, and we were expected to finish ninth. And we beat the favorite. That's a great effort. Arctic Crop is going to be an awesome stud, man. He's going to be a great stud. I'm sure some of you are like, oh, why did you want this horse? I'm telling you, this horse is a really... I think out of all the amazing um, Gallup Racer horses people talk about, I don't hear Arctic Crop in those conversations. And I'm like, why? This is a great underrated horse. Desert Diver is the favorite in today's China Cup going 10 furlongs on the tough in Hong Kong. We need to win. Skipping the post parade. Let's do this thing. Anybody hasn't watched horse racing in Hong Kong? You should. They're not racing now, obviously, with COVID. But Sha Tin. Sha Tin and, uh, is another one. Really good race courses. Really exciting races. We set the record here with Arctic Crop last year. But horse racing in China is exciting. Usually always big fields in general, 14-horse fields. I know it's like that in Australia, too. Um, seems like everywhere except for America, really, across the world tracks run big fields and america is like they only run big fields if it's like a special race other than that it's usually what seven horses eight sometimes six at my local track the average is six sometimes five for two or three races on or eight race car which is ridiculous only time there's ever large fields is when there's like special you know races and events which is crazy and then as you can imagine the payouts are pretty garbage so the track is just kind of just just stealing money we're supposed to be at the front with Desert Diver. I've totally fallen asleep, so this race may suck. We're not getting a seven. I know, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, sorry. Calm down, calm down, calm down, please. Thank you. All right. I totally fell asleep with, with Desert. Totally fell asleep. I got to get him to the front. Totally fell asleep. We can still win this race. I mean, you go for a revolution, but if you don't get it, it doesn't mean you can't win. I mean, you win most of your races without a revolution. It's just nice if you can get one, but... Um, yeah, totally fell asleep there. Okay, this is uh, where the should be able to move him to the front now. He should be doing okay. Hopefully. Okay. Why are you moving out? I swear that guy was like moving out against me. And they're in the home right. stretch. Well, we're the favorite, so unless we mop this up, we're still looking good. Still looking good. 
while it was coming. Just kinda, not really. Yeah. Pull away. Pull away. Desert Diver, this is a great horse too. I mean, I, I had him in... I had him in the wrong position for half the race. I moved him to the front in the last four furlongs. We're able to still win by at least four lanes. Like, come on, man. These are the horses I like. Easy rides. Horses that get it. They're not hot-tempered. They settle down quickly, even if they do get a little anxious for a second, you know? He was a little over-anxious because I slowed him down when I put him behind that horse. He got over it in two seconds. He ends up winning. We set the record. Another race for the GWS spurt was timed perfectly i mean this is this is this is my thing this is what i like man this is what i like and the thing is you still got to be diligent about running your race you know it's just with certain horses it's just much easier to do that than others so this is how we looked for those four races we finished second um with nightclub when we were supposed to finish fourth that's a success Blues Breeze was supposed to finish 11th. We finished 8th, so technically a success. Arctic Crop was supposed to finish 9th. We finished 2nd. That was a success. And Desert Diver was supposed to win, and we won 1,400. Excuse me, 14,000 Gs. Total of 26,000 points in that week. That is how we do it. Gallup World Series scorecard. Arctic Crop still in 2nd place. Just 1 point behind Special Art. Desert Diver is... 12 points behind Global Song, so we're probably not winning that. Jockey-wise, we're in third. I think it's a little too late. Uh, I want to see if I can get Arctic Crop. To, do we have him in another race? He's off. Okay, so we race with a lot of horses. Here we're going to do. Well, we'd have to get him another GWS. I don't know if there's enough time, and there isn't. So I guess we'll be done with Arctic Crop here. Um, we'll like to put him in a race for next year, then, whenever he's back to blue. 6 to 10 furlongs for Arctic. Uh... No international G1s until, like, March. So, let's see what we can do with him. Mm. Uh, is there a G2 anywhere we can run him in? G3 is a big drop in class. I don't know if that'll be good. Let's try this G3, though. Hey, for longs. Post-time handicap, 126. That's not terrible, actually. That, that's pretty doable. All right, Blues Breeze. They want him to race in a G3. What would the the weight be for this? 130. That's pretty high. I want to avoid that. So let's see if we can get him into a G2 somewhere. Uh, manageable G2. Doesn't like we're going to get the chance to do that, though. We ran him in open. What's the weight? 147. Yeah, I figured it was going to be high. Gosh darn it. Uh, this G3 weight, 147. So, yeah, we got to keep him at G2s or higher. We can't even afford here, 130. So, Blues Breeze, we're not going to be able to race for a while. This G2 going nine furlongs, he comes in at 132. It's not ideal, but we don't really have a choice with this horse, unfortunately. There's not a whole lot of other, not a whole lot of options we got for him. So, we'll run him in this G2. He'll be about 12 pounds heavier, but that's not terrible compared to the 150. Bionic Monster, he is good to go. Desert Diver is doing fantastic for us. I'm going to use him as a stud. I mean, look, he's almost at 100K earnings. 13 races lifetime, 7 G1 wins. Like, he has been dominating. Double S ranked horse. He's, he's just, this is a sleeper. Quiet horse, nobody really talks about. But golly, those stats, and that distance too. Just being able to breed horses to, to have these longer distances and that stamina is also going to be great. So even though he has no abilities, he, I still think he's going to be an awesome sire. Awesome stud to sire some bowls here. 10 14. Well, you run him in the winter GP, but he won't be ready by then. 18,000, though. That, that's kind of tempting. Oh, that's tempting. It's so tempting. What about this race? 128 handicap. That's not terrible. Um, it's really tempting to run him in this winter GP, but we've been on a roll with him, and it's only, it's only tempting because of the earnings. If that said, you know, 2,000 or 4,000 instead of 18,000, I wouldn't even consider. So, I am not going to be full this year. I'm going to be patient. Now, how much? 130. That's not bad to run him in a G3. Um, 10 to 14. This G2, 128. We'll probably do that. This one, 143. Yikes. This G3, 154. Yikey, yikes. I mean, there's, just, there's not a whole lot of G1s in the beginning of the year, unfortunately. Um, especially on turf. So we'll run them in this Wint 143. That's still high. Which one do I see? This one, 128. 12 furlongs, 128. 
Well, manage that. Nightclub. They want to run him seven furlongs. Why not? And yeah, nightclub's looking good. He is looking good so far. And Aunt B should be ready to go. So we got two more races left in this video, and that's how we will close out year 18 of the Gallup Racer 2004, which has been a blast. Hopefully, you guys have been enjoying. Obviously, we've had some hiccups here and there, but I mean, this has still been one of our best years in general. It may not feel like it. But it, it really has. I mean, you know, we've got, what, 11 G1s, I think, to our, our name. I can't remember what's the most I won in this season. Maybe close to 15. I can't remember the exact number. But this has been a pretty solid year, considering. There's a lot of races I could have won that I didn't. So we got 11 G1s in the year. We still have never finished third. That's so funny. But yeah, 18 wins, 7 places. So it's been a good year. I've been pleased with the performance. Like I said, some hiccups, but um, yeah, this is, a, this is a year I can look back and say, you know what, this was really good, and looking forward to year 18. And B, favorite in this G3, as she should be. We're going six spur longs, and uh, we'll just roll. Just roll, and hopefully she finishes the year strong. No temper, no craziness here. The horses are I swear, I see powerful mint everywhere for records. I might need to think about getting that horse. Great start for Aunt B. We're going to move her to the inside. And I think this is a slope, so i got to manage her speed carefully here because if she goes too fast, she's going to gas out or get over anxious. And I can't slow her down too much because that will also mess with her. So it's got to gotta pull it back every now and then. If I pull it back too much, she's going to get over eager. That's why I'm not doing it. I've done that before. She's not supposed to be leading. Supposed to be behind the lead horse, but if I were to pull her back too much, that would really mess us up. So I'm just hoping we've been running really fast here. Oh, so wait, red is actually really fast. Um, green is mid and blue is slow. Got it. I had it backwards. Oh uh, boy, this may not work. Yep, we got beat. And she's such a inch. <sighs> I mean, yeah, I was running her at the front where she wasn't supposed to be, but to to drop that significantly, that oh, this, she's such an interesting horse. Like I've seen her ability, I've witnessed it, but when she's not in her ideal spot, she suffers. It's kind of like oh man, it's that I don't I don't like that trade off. I really don't. Like I said, I'd rather have a less talented horse that's more consistent. I hate the hate the ups and downs it's just it's not what i like bonic monster's the favorite in today's g2 which we should be hopefully he wins because if close race happens or something that's going to slow his performance but aunt b she's it's yeah she's she it's a love hate thing because like i said i know she's great when she's great and then when she's not great she's pretty bad so it's it's that that's a bad trade-off to me i'd rather take a great horse that on their worst day they're not terrible and be on her worst day is like pretty darn bad you know what i mean and be on her worst day is like a e-ranked horse in this game that's yeah no bueno like i said i know i was running her towards the front but i have slowed her down a lot before we bumped that horse bonnet monster's tough he shakes it off but i've slowed her down a lot before and when i've done that she has gone haywire you know so I, I didn't want to do that every time i slow her down too much because she's running too fast she always just she blows a gasket so i wasn't going to do that you know what i mean and nothing happened nothing ended up happening she just ended up just like losing the race and now bionic monster close race is gonna unlock this is too close no idea what happened with bionic monster either what what is going on this is that's and again like i still will probably have these horses when we look at them these are bad performances on horses that should be performing a lot better i lost horses for way worse for way less i i guess i should say and you know it's just yeah way less i should say i'm doing terrible with some of these horses in some races and not losing them this game is broken sometimes that's two terrible efforts. We were supposed to win with both the horse both of those horses finished eighth and ninth. Like what that's really strange. I don't I can't even tell you what that's about. I don't know. 
We lost Blues. No, we lost. Who we lose? We still have Ant B. Who do we lose? Bionic Monster. Like I said, I didn't really care. That horse is already on the. He he was already past his his point. He was supposed to be retired at any moment. Um, I want to try Ant B again because I'm kind of at the point where if I lose her, I'm not gonna be heartbroken. I know how great she is, but. That inconsistency is driving me nuts. Like, I know some of you guys love it and would deal with it. I just don't want to deal with that. As great of a horse as she is, there's plenty of other great horses in this game. I really don't want to deal with an off-and-on horse if this is going to be a thing. And fortunately, she's, she has a fast growth spurt, so she'll be able to be retired soon. But I'm just kind of at a point where I'm just like, oh, she's great, but there's a lot of other greater horses who don't have this up-and-down inconsistency. You guys have seen me race with those horses. They have... They have been great. Golden Monster is one of those horses. She didn't have a whole lot of inconsistencies. There was a couple of races where it was close and she lost them because of that close race not good ability. But for the most part, she was pretty darn dominant. Bionic Monster, for some reason, seemed to do way worse with that ability than she did, his mother. Uh, man, B is great. But like I said, that, that up and down consistency is just kind of like, ugh, I'm not a fan of that. I'm going to run her in an open. 132 weight. Oh, I can run her in a G3 and 119. What's her stamina? 54. 10 furlongs is a bit long. I'll give it a shot. Like I said, I'm prepared to lose her at this point. I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's just it's not worth the headache for me. Oh, Tokyo Cup. Can we run in this, actually? I have some money to spare. Can we... Uh, let's see. <laughs> 10 furlongs. Let's see what horse has a lot of stamina, probably. Anybody in the 60s? No. 58 for Cosmic Arts. Horse is a little anxious, though. Ugh. Um, hmm. No response. Good temper. Stamina's terrible. For Chili Link, 10 furlongs is too long of a race. Perfect voice. I've raced with this horse before. Let's actually do perfect voice here. 17K? That's nah, fine. Winner place. All right. I love the Tokyo Cup anyway, so I just want to run it. But yeah. Aunt B, she's great, but like I said, I just I'm not a huge fan of just the I don't like horses long term like that. I will take a less talented horse that's consistent any day over a horse with a much talent but not consistent. So we'll see what happens here. We should win. We should win with Aunt B here. We should, but I don't know. I'm gonna do my best to make sure she's actually not leading. I know that hurt us a bit obviously in the last race but still i mean nothing else outside of that nothing else happened i wasn't running her too fast i didn't move her she didn't bump anybody she just like gassed out in the stretch she just had like no heart no finish that's it's pretty weird she gets out really good that's kind of the that's the thing she gets out so well and then like no the field doesn't want to challenge her and then i have to slow her down and if i do that too much she gets over anxious this is stuff i shouldn't even have to worry about you guys hear what i'm saying with a horse that has a good temper, having to slow them down or whatever is not going to bother them. A horse like Ant B, you got to be careful because you do it a little bit past too much and then that's going to upset the horse. And that's something I personally am I'm just not a fan of in this game. I know maybe for certain people that's a challenge and they enjoy that. I don't. And they're running, what, nine wide across? That's That does not need to happen. It does not happen in real horse racing. I've watched horse racing in Australia. I watch it, of course, in all the Asia circuits. They don't stay nine wide in a 10 furlong race. That does not happen. Not until the stretch do they fan out. But they do not run in a line like this, nine across the track for 10 furlongs. Golly. It's little things like this you notice in this game after you've been playing it for so long. This is, look at this. They're literally in the line like they came out of the gates a furlong ago. That's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know what's going to happen. And now, look, now they move in and then they're going to move back out. Like, oh my goodness. What was I supposed to do? There's no space. There is no space for me anywhere in there. There's no space. No space. Yeah, this is what I mean. Aunt B, when she can roll, she rolls. But it's a headache. It's still a headache just to deal with the horse that's up and down like that. I don't like the inconsistencies. When she's great, she's great. When she's not, she's terrible. It's just like... <sighs> that's a G3 race. That's a, you know, that's a G1. Still wouldn't be surprising. I know she's a G1 caliber horse. She's proven that. But like I said, it's you got to have her on her best days. If you don't, it's not going to be a fun time. 
I kind of wish I could just retire her now. But again, I'm worried about Offspring getting her temper rating. I just, I hope that doesn't happen. That's my only worry. But of course, I'll try it with one horse. They get it. Perfect voice. I used to have this horse. It was awesome. It reminds me a lot of Great Bolero. So we dominated on these dirt tracks. You guys remember, I had him probably five or six years ago in this game. Perfect voice was awesome. Now, maybe less than that. Maybe like four years ago, I should say. The horses. So they ruler still has a record here. He is sitting in our pasture right now. But perfect voice, we should win. This this is one of those horses that you don't have to do too much, and he's just a great ride all the way around, man. Solid start. We gotta get him to the front, but just need to put him behind a horse or two. Uh, let's see what they do. Alright, this is fine. He's one of those horses that responds really well. You know what I mean? He knows he knows when to like uh, he knows when to um, calm down. Yeah, I miss this horse, man. He, he was such an easy. A lot of my I'm noticing a lot of my favorite horses were dirt horses, man. A lot of my favorite horses in this game that I've ridden so far have been dirt horses. Yep, it'd be awesome to actually get perfect voice back. He would be a great stud. I can't recall if we... I don't think we've actually used him. I think we lost him. I think I had one bad race with him. And it wasn't even like a bad race. We were supposed to finish, I think, first or second. And we ended up finishing like third. And the game took him away from us. Literally, one bad result. Not even a, a terribly, you know, just atrocious result. I've done considerably worse with other horses like Ant B and Blues Breeze. And more races. Ah, didn't mean to bump that horse. And um, we still have him to this day. Well, we lost Blue's um, or Bionic Monster. Can I get past this horse? What is happening? I'm trying. I was trying to get. Okay, thank you. Well, I was trying to get him past that horse, and it just he was not moving, or there was no gap. I don't know what happened. Don't know what happened. I'm pretty sure we're still gonna win this race because Perfect Voice is just amazing. We got closed down on this six, though. Come on, Perfect. Get him at the wire. No. Darn it. Uh, I think winner place was our goal, though. I think. I'm pretty sure. I don't think it was just win. So I think we're still okay. Yep. And that's considering we had contact and we had the AI doing their normal. Let's block the, uh, the user in the stretch. So still a good result. We should have won. No doubt. I mean, the win was right there. Just... For whatever reason, when I was trying to get him past that horse on the inside, the space was there. He just wasn't moving past the horse. That's like, that's really strange. Anyway, 17-year classifications. I don't think any of our horses are going to be at the top. Desert Dibro, though, for four-year-old. Turf. Let's see. I didn't even think about that. Awesome. We, wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Three of our horses got awards this year. I was not expecting that. Desert Diver, as he should. I mean, he's got seven G1s to his name, and I think half of those came in this year alone. Desert Diver. Our very own Desert Diver gets Horse of the Year. The Turf Classic, I believe that was in Texas, or the Turf Cup. Arctic Crop still ends up getting Best Sprinter or, Mar or, best sprinter or Miler. Excuse me. Main G1 win was in Australia. Best Older Philly, Desert Diver. Have I been calling... Wait, wait. Desert Diver is a cult. How did he get Best... F oh. The game's doing that weird thing again. Aunt B, best two-year-old filly. So we still ended up doing well with her. Forgot this is only her two-year-old season, but still. She's still uh, up and down horse. But Desert Diver with horse of the year and best older filly. Like, what? Why? <laughs> uh, Jockey-wise, race is one. We finished in fifth uh, with 19. That definitely should have been 30. Average, we still finish in first as we usually do. 43% average earnings. We finish in sixth. 129. Not bad. Not bad. Horse of the year, Desert Diver. Good stuff. And us. Highest average as always. I, we've gotten this award for like the last 10 years in a row. We'll get the other ones more consistently as well. 11 G1s on the year. 
Yeah, Desert Diver is a dude. And they gave him best Philly. Game is broken. <laughs> Game is definitely broken, people. Um, Who did I race with? Who isn't? Arctic Crop is good. Blues is good. So, Arctic Crop is six years old now. Wow. Can we retire him yet? Yeah, we can. Blues Breeze, we can retire as well. I mean, I'm going to keep running, riding these horses. As I have three studs right now. Great Bolero, I just recently retired. Uh, Bionic Club is still there, and Sedate Ruler is not too old. So, there's no other space for anybody else. And those are three great horses. Even though Bionic Club, I'm kind of... Does he have close race? Not good. I don't think so. I think that's Golden Monster. So I'm kind of like I said, I've been able to get some great horses out of Golden Monster, but I just I'm I hate that ability with the passion. Aunt B is ill. That's just I probably figures we ran her too much. We'll give her plenty of time off. She'll be ready to go back in March. Um, and we still have her. Can't retire her yet. I would love to do that just so I don't have to worry about her anymore. I mean, she's got 92 speed. She's a great horse, but the inconsistencies drive me nuts. Drives me nuts. Maybe for you guys, it's you know you're okay with it. That drives me nuts. Luffy, buddy. G3 here. I'm gonna keep it simple for her. Nightclub is still D ranked. He's our only original horse we still have here, but you know he's been doing very well. Very well. He has done. He has finished better than all of his projections in all four of his races so far. And. Um, so I don't know when his growth spurt's going to be, but very consistent. No kidding. I feel like we have seen that with him. So, um, yeah, we will, uh, we'll continue to roll on here. Let's see which horses are going to be race ready this year. Let's go out to the pasture. Golden Ruler, five-star potential. No surprise. And she's a filly. Holy crap, five-star future, five-star flex, four-star power, two-star calm. The first filly from Sedate Ruler out of Golden Monster. Oh, I hope she doesn't inherit. Oh, she's going to inherit close race. Not good because Sedate Ruler has no... Ah. Oh, man. She's going to be great and dangerous at the same time because if we're in a close race and that happens and we don't finish where we're supposed to, we could lose her. I d I'm so sick. I don't want to lose the Phillies, man. Like, I, we haven't had, we've only had two Phillies so far since we started breeding. We lost both of those. I want to have a Philly and retire her to the point where she'll actually become a broodmare. That is my goal. We have lost our only two Phillies. Five star potential. No surprise there. Cannot wait to see her. Race ready this year. And our one-year-old, Hidden Mystic. Out of Night Breeze from Sedate Ruler. I think he's going to be awesome. He's a gray. And I was going to call him Skip Away, but we'll wait till we get another gray to call Skip Away. Um, he should be solid too, honestly. Like I said, Night Breeze um, has a spurred ability. Sedate Ruler has no ability. So basically what you're getting is a horse, more than likely with Sedate Ruler's stats, and then the ability of Night Breeze also with some of her stats, because she still wasn't a bad racehorse, as you can see from nightclub um so those are the foals we got now really excited for golden ruler but ah that ability is such a crutch man i do not like it there's nobody else we can retire we we have a space for aunt b i think but golden monster she is she was great she's 11 years old but her only ability is close race not good it's just like uh don't even I want to continue to produce great horses, but at the same time, I hate that ability so much. I'm almost willing to, like, after this year, like, get rid of her. You know, Night Breeze, yeah, she's an AE Val instead of S, but still, she has good abilities. She has Spurt and Last Corner Leader. No bad abilities. Now, statistically, when you look, obviously, she's got a couple Cs in there compared to Golden Monster. But she's only one letter off. She's not terrible. I still think we can get some good consistency out of her. And like I said, she actually has good abilities. Golden Monster is a great horse, statistically speaking, but her only ability is a terrible one. You know, and I, I don't want to continue to produce horses with that ability. You know what I mean? I'm kind of at that point where I'm just like, I think we've, we've experienced and experimented enough with Golden Monster. She's been great. She had a great career. She's provided us with some great foals. 
I just don't want to deal with that ability anymore. So I may just consider letting her go after this year. After she, um, after she uh, has this next fall, I think we're going to get rid of uh, Golden Monster. And then we'll just stick to Night Breeze, which, like I said, I'm liking the consistency and the abilities of the Night Breeze. She's, a, she's not as great, but like I said, I will take the consistency with better abilities over a horse with phenomenal talent but terrible abilities. That's just how I play. Some of you guys probably play it differently, but that's that's more comforting. I mean, that's more comforting for me. That's what I was trying to say. But that was a good year. So like I said, next game in the rotation of games to play will be God Racer 2001. We've done better in that game, but I've not played that game in over a month. So I'm probably going to be rusty, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of playing off screen to get my bearings back with me and then that's the next game we'll have back in the rotation Galbracer 3 i pretty much will just save for live streams now because it's the only game i can effectively live stream so that's why i haven't been uploading videos of that um so i just save it for the live streams and we already talked about rival stars and champion horse racing are going to be on the ordinary mobile gaming channel so if you guys haven't subscribed to that one uh description box below it should be down there if not just go to the home page of my channel you should see it under there as well it should also pop up in like cards or something uh, with my videos appreciate you guys love and support as always hopefully you have been enjoying uh, the episodes to say the least um, i think we're only in year 18 of this game but there's still so much for us to do is um phenomenal there's a lot of long-term um play value with this game that's my favorite type of video game where there's still so much to do and you can play the game for you know a long time after it has came out so that is going to do it horse racing gamer sending out until next time hope you all have a great and fantastic day see ya and goodbye